Hey guys, so another learning lesson, shouldn't be too long. Biblical definition of faith and the etymology, the, uh, the, the background basis for faith and what it is and where it came from. So faith, Acts 16, 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. As the scriptures demonstrate throughout, the issue in salvation is not one of knowledge or perception or understanding. Rather, the issue is one of faith, believing in the veracity of God and his message of good news and accepting it non-meritoriously. In other words, you're not actually earning it. You're just accepting what God has already done for you. <clears throat> Luke 7, 50, Luke's, uh, 7, chapter 7, rather, verse 50, Acts 26, 18, Galatians 3, 2 through 9. I'll go over this very, very simply. Here's Luke 8, 12. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. Luke twenty two sixty seven, If you are the Christ, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, If I tell you, you will not believe me. John six twenty nine. Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. John twelve thirty seven. Even after Jesus had done all these miraculous signs in their presence, they would still not believe in him. Acts 13.41 Look, you scoffers, wonder and perish, for I am going to do something in your days that you would never believe, even if someone told you. Nor is salvation a matter of believing in the existence of God. Everyone, as we have seen, comes to that knowledge or belief, even if later in life they throw it aside in hardness of heart. So at some point everybody becomes aware of the fact that this is all intentional and created and um, fashioned together perfectly by design. James 2.19, you believe that there is one God, good, even the demons believe that and shudder. In biblical terms, faith is an act of free will. Saving faith is a response to God, the act of accepting the truth of the good news that the Son of God died for our sins and that we are saved by putting our faith in him as our substitute. Saving faith is a decision to submit to God in order to be delivered from judgment by being willing to accept the truth of the gospel and thereby embrace Jesus Christ as Savior through the gospel. Merely hearing the gospel is insufficient for salvation. It must be mixed with faith. Hebrews 3, 19 through 4, 3. Now we see that they, in this case the Exodus generation, were unable to enter this place of rest because of their unbelief, in other words, lack of faith. So let us beware, lest any of you should seem to fall short on this score by casting aside God's promise in a similar way. For we have had the gospel proclaimed to us just as they did, but the word they heard did not profit them, for, though they heard it, they did not mix it with faith. Therefore, it is us, it is we, rather, who believe, who enter into this rest, not those without faith, just as he has said, and so on. Placing faith in Jesus Christ is a choice which involves no personal merit whatsoever, for Jesus Christ is the one who has meritoriously died on our behalf. Salvation is a gift freely given and appropriately by faith alone. The giver possesses the merit. The recipients are merely, merely willing to receive the gift. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For you have been saved by God's grace through faith in Christ. And this did not come from you, it is God's gift. Nor did it come from what you have done, lest anyone should boast. Romans 4, 2-3 For if Abraham really was considered righteous, in other words, in the eyes of men, as a result of the works he did, then he does, he does have something to boast about, but not in front of God. What does the scripture actually say? It actually says that Abraham believed in God, and so his faith was attributed to him for righteousness. In other words, as a gift, not something he earned. An attribution. It is God who gives us the gift of Jesus Christ. See 2 Corinthians 9.15 and also Romans 5.15-17 for more context. Faith is merely the ability to accept that life-saving gift. And believing is merely a matter of exercising the choice to do so. It is not a matter of works. It is simply a matter of utilizing our God-given ability to respond to the truth, submitting our will to His will through faith. John 6.29 And Jesus answered, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one who he has sent. This simple, non-meritorious act of placing our faith in Jesus Christ, believing the truth about him contained in the gospel and made real and meaningful to us by the Holy Spirit, is the way in which we receive the grace God has provided for all mankind in his dear Son who died for us all. John 3.16 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only beloved son in order that whoever believes in him, and I mean whoever, might not perish but have eternal life. Some people like to think that that only means for believers. It's not true. It's for everyone. The etymology of faith. While the Bible uses many different terms in discussing faith, when that word and its cognates are found in English versions, it usually means that the version is translating a form of the Hebrew word aman in the Old Testament or in the Greek word pist pistueo or pistuo, sorry, in the New Testament. For basic verbal form in both cases is most often translated believe. For example, at Genesis 15, 6, where we are told that Abraham believed in God and God credited it to him for righteousness, aman is the word used. The root is related to the idea of being firm and reliable. Thus, amunoth, amunoth I guess, are supporting pillars while amen, our, our amen means truthfully or reliably so. That's Greek, or that's Hebrew stuff. Sorry, guys. Probably shouldn't have had that in there. Therefore, in the Hebrew, the concept of belief carries with, the, with it the idea that the object of belief, in other words, God, can be relied upon by those who put their trust in him. Thus, the root aman applies la that like a solid pillar, God will support us when we lean on him. And to this, we can say Amen. The Greek word pistuo is the one used to render aman in the 3rd century B.C. Greek translation of the Old Testament. In other words, the Septuagint, if you've heard of that before. That's the main uh, Old Testament Greek translation. Since, the version greatly, since this version greatly influenced the linguistic choices of the New Testament writers, we may be sure that in our literature, pistuo likewise carries the same co connotation of reliance on God. In all ancient Greek, Pistuo means to have faith or believe in an object. As a negative concept of a pistia, faithlessness, makes clear that the faith indicated by pistuo is more than intellectual appreciation of something. See Romans 11, 20 through 23, where unbelief is a very willful attitude of heart. Additionally, the participles of pistuo are used by various New Testament writers where English versions commonly use the noun believers. This fact this last fact is significant because to the writers of scripture, believers are people are, are people who have, have, are, or are coming to be in a state of believing. There we go. Whatever the tense employed, the participle used in lieu of the noun makes crystal clear that believers are people involved in the action of belief, whether that action is emphasized as having taken place via, let's see, Acts 18.27, uh, 19.18, 21.20, uh, also verse 25, so 21.25, and Titus 3.8, it is ever continuing, Ephesians 1.19, or having been accomplished once and for all, Hebrews 4.3. Hopefully that made sense. Um, the basis for faith is much deeper, as, as just uh, explained, than just knowing God is there. For example, Satan actually knows probably more about God than we could actually know in this flesh, but still refuses to actually believe in him, right? Refuses to accept his salvation, his forgiveness, refuses to accept God's answer to anything, clearly, because he wants to usurp him. So um, just, just simple knowledge uh, is not enough. We have to have a deep, abiding understanding and acceptance of who he is to actually have faith, according to the biblical definition. Plenty of people who like to redefine what any of this means, unfortunately, are not uh, actually saved. Some in the Catholic tradition say that faith is an action that you do by works, which total malarkey. Hope you guys found this useful. I'm going to put the etymology portion in the notes so you guys can go over it. And if you want to do a little bit of your own Greek and Hebrew study, um, it never hurts. It'll help you expand on your understanding of these things. Thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll talk to you soon.